Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be showing you how you can take items from Simbrief, which is a product of Navigraph, and import them directly into Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now the, one of the cool things is, is that recently they've actually added a plugin which not only allows you to take your flights directly out of uh, Simbrief, but it now also will give you the charts inside of the airplane themselves. So uh, we really have kind of a double whammy of a presentation here, and as you can hear, uh, Microsoft is already happily chirping in the background here, getting ready for that part of the flight. But before that, I actually want to quickly walk you through it. So I'm going to hit up no flight here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and type this in. We're going to be flying a TBM 900 today. Uh, we're going to be traveling from Martha's Vineyard, and we're going to fly up to our lovely, uh, of course, where else would I fly? Bradley, because well, why not? And um, we're going to go down here. This looks good to me. This looks good to me. This looks good. And again, I'm not going to get too fancy here. I'm just going to keep it very, very basic. We're going to give it a second to give me a route. That route looks perfectly reasonable to me. To be honest, in the real world, if you're going from Martha's Vineyard to Bradley, they're probably going to send you direct Hartford, direct Bradley, kind of a thing like that. But I'm perfectly fine flying the Victor 146 here. And again, the more complicated, the better, because it'll demonstrate my point. I'm happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and press the Generate Flight button. It's going to sit here and go through the motions real quickly, and it's going to go generate all the critical information. It's going to tell us we have about a half an hour flight today, which is actually pretty good. It's going to give us a route. It's going to recommend all the different runways. You can see here we're coming out of 2-4 on Martha's Vineyard, and we're going to be doing runway 6 up at Bradley. And if we scroll down, you have your ATC flight plan. If we want to copy paste that over into your VAT sim, for example, arrival, departure, all sorts of cool pieces that you probably could need. We also, of course, have a little flight plan. So if you want to do one of these automatically, we actually have the ability to do. Uh, one of the cool options we now have on here is if you go to the top of the page, you're going to notice it says, it says import into charts. If I press that button, what it's going to do is it's going to open up the Navigraph charts app. Now, the neat thing about this little device here is it's going to go us to actually see what our flight looks like piece by piece by piece. And one of the things I'm very impressed with is you can actually go ahead and kind of plan out all the different components that you're going to be doing here. Now, one of the things you probably noticed a minute ago is we're probably going to be using ILS for six. So if I come down here and I go ahead and click on this, you can actually get all sorts of critical information. But more importantly, if I want to go ahead and select a specific approach, I can just come in here and grab it. Notice that it automatically selected all of our runway six approaches. Again, pretty slick, not gonna lie. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick ILS. Uh, we're gonna go, um, I like, I'm not a huge fan of Penna. I'm just gonna do a final transition because my assumption there is they're probably gonna make me go direct Janet anyway, or more likely what would happen in the real world is they come up here over Ellington. They'd send you basically on 240 and then they go right, right. They'd send you, uh, what is it, usually a uh, 3-3, and then they, of course, they'd say, turn right heading, I forget, usually it's like the 0-2-0, intercept the localizer, you know, contact tower on you know, 123.0 kind of a thing. So we're just going to assume that that happens. So I'm happy with that. That looks good. That looks good. Everything's been all set. I'm pretty much ready to rock. You can come down here and resave your flight if you need to do so. Now we're going to show you the cool part, now that we've got everything all pre-planned. If we actually jump back into Flight Simulator, we now have the ability to import the entire flight automatically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to where I'm at PDF Home, search the MFD button. You're going to see this button that says Sim Brief. Now keep in mind, in order to have this possible, you need the Navigraph account that's either their limited account or they kind of like do it by monthly and stuff like that. But they also now have the capability where you can um, actually have a little program you download. And when you download that program, it'll update all your key uh, elements and navigational data. So I'm going to click on the Sim Brief button. It's going to say Refreshing Flight Plan. If this is the first time that you've done this, uh, what it will do is it'll get a little grumpy at you on account of the fact that you haven't linked your account. Linking your account is super duper easy. You literally just say link account, it opens up a little web page, you click OK, and you're in. So I'm going to request that. Uh, that's literally download. I'm going to press the import button. So what's going to happen now is it's going to import my entire route. And if you look up above my head, you can see it's already ready to rock for me. Now, the reason this is so incredibly useful is now we have the ability to actually go through different parts of the flight plan. For example, we can delete it, we can either edit our fields, anything we choose to do. And the coolest thing here is this entire flight plan is literally ready to rock. Now, if I wanted to, I could come down to Bradley and click on that, and I could actually you know, go through all my thing, I could do a whole lot of waypoint. These are all things we'll be covering in future videos because there's a lot of new stuff in the G3000 that we have access to that we can fit with. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna go back to the main MFT, and you're gonna notice this button that says Charts now. Now, for folks who've been doing a lot of work in VR, uh, you've had a really, really tough time with charts on account of the fact that with charts, uh, one of the problems you're always going to face is that you have to have them physical in front of you. Now, I have an iPad with ForeFlight on it, so I have that advantage. But in VR, it's really awkward to use. Now, you can actually click on the Charts button. It'll say, uh, bring up the thing, and it'll actually let you pick the chart you want. And you can even go ahead and make it full screen and display it right on the screen that you're currently operating with. 
Now, this is something that uh, we've been wanting for a very long time. And the fact that we now have that capability is fantastic because I can actually look over here and analyze my chart. I've got my frequencies. I've got my minimums. I've got everything down here right on the bottom. Now, if I wanted to change the chart, I could just hit chart selection. I could come up here and I could, of course, select whatever particular one that I want. You'll notice it's got a little sync POF button up at the top to kind of help us out. We also have the ability to go ahead and do one of those if we wanted to kind of make it a little bit larger for the purposes of being able to kind of see different components with it. You also have all the different pieces. One of the things I love is if you actually look here, there's a plan mode, which can allow you to see exactly where your plan is. There's a profile mode, which I'll just open up that part about the runway. Again, everything's here for our header. Of course, we can select, select all. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pick our airport that we're going to be flying into today. I'm going to press proudly just like that. Press the enter key. It's going to take a second. I'm going to press a approach. Of course, remember, we're picking the ILS for six. Now we use cat two and three naturally. Uh, actually, we'll do cat one. Why am I being so lazy here? That looks pretty good to me. Now, if I go to chart options, check it out. I can now open this up and I can see the individual components of this immediately. Obviously, we can shut off fit width that we don't need to. We can do the header. We can even do the little profile piece on the side. Now, where the real magic of this particular feature of having these charts displayed comes in is a little later on. I should put this to half if I want to put my little piece of uh, traffic over there on the right. And again, we'll cover some of these things in another video because of just how much has been changed on the G3000. But for now, I'm just going to leave it like this. And now we're going to enjoy our flight and come catch you when we get a little bit closer to our destination. All right, we're on our way down. So one of the interesting things here is I've got a couple things going, and uh, we'll definitely see this for other videos because it's really come such a long way with this aircraft, is I've actually got VNAV going right now. And I've, what I've done actually is after loading up my little approach here is I've set it up so it's actually flying the first part of the approach for me. Kind of handy. And again, one of the things I find so wild here is you can actually see how it's automatically capturing the ILS and actually letting us know about it. Unbelievably impressive stuff, we'll say for another day for sure. So what we have here is I've loaded up so that my right side has got my approach plate and I've got it set up so that my left side has actually got my navigational display. Uh, like I said, we've done videos on the G3000, not that we won't have a couple coming up, but you'll notice if I actually switch between these two panes, I can actually select which one I want to kind of pay attention to. So this one, for example, if I want to zoom in a little tiny bit, I can come in, I can come out. On this one, if I switch to this mode, I can, uh, you can see it got all sorts of fun details here. Chart selection, of course, I can come in here, and like we saw before, this is a great time to go ahead and take a look at the plan. I'll be the profile, we have the minimums, everything like that, and we'll start getting some of that set up as we proceed on our descent here uh, down into a Bradley. So first things first, uh, we want to get some of our frequencies kind of all preset and ready to rock here. It looks like we need to be at honey at 1,800 feet here. Final approach course is going to be 58 degrees. The G3000 will do that for us. Hey, look, 123, 120.3. I even remembered. I can't believe I remembered that freak. I haven't been to Bradley in a while, but it's all good. Now, one thing we want to do is take a look at our minimums. We are type A. So let's see here. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Wow, that's what I call minimums here. So it looks like that 373, pretty good. 373, 200 feet. A good time to go ahead and I'll punch all those things in on what we're kind of coming down here for our approach. Oh, let's see here, PFD. We're gonna go over here. Da -da 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 we're gonna do uh, 373, I think was the minimums here. Of course, if we want to be a little bit fancier, we can come in here and uh, see, ba -ba. We're just uh, we're going blind here. Oh, radio temperature compensated. I like that, press 200. So now our minimums are programmed and ready to rock. I just want to confirm that that's set up all set. Looks good to me. And now we're going to continue uh, flipping down here. I'll go back over to uh, the PFMFD mode. Chart selection. I've got our little thing pieced here. I'm going to go pop that one real quickly. And it looks pretty solid. Uh, at this point, uh, we haven't gotten close enough to actually appear on the screen. Uh, the reason being, if you actually take a look, I'll switch to the other paint real fast here. Boop. I zoom out just a teeny tiny bit. You can see that I basically need to get to this point in order to hit that. Uh, thanks to the magic of editing, however can now see that my aircraft exists in two different places at one time. Uh, you have over here on the left hand side, which is going to be our regular approach. And you can see on the right hand side of our lovely little airplane that's actually sneaking into this piece of paper, which I think is absolutely wild. Now, one of the fun things here, which I, like I said, gets such a kick out of this. Notice, by the way, is it remembers the two different pages separate from each other. If we go down to the plan mode, it makes it very clear to see me. If we go down to profile mode, uh, we have nothing to see here because I'm not in position. Obviously, we have our header, we have our minimums, everything is up in pre-pro. Programmed. And uh, one of the tricky things that we're going to have to deal with today is like I was mentioning earlier on, normally what they would do is they'd vector us around. Janet, we have to get down to 2400, which is a little on the low side. So that's going to be a little challenging for us to do a turn. Normally, this would be a procedure turn for us. We'd have to actually hit it and do um, a left, left, left and uh, come back and line ourselves up. 
but uh, for the sakes of arguments, what we'll actually do is we'll synchronize our heading and we'll pretend that we're going to be getting some vectors here. Generally, like I said, they try to vector you right in this little, see how this, there's like a little cutout here? They try to kind of keep you in there if you're something kind of small like us, which fortunately for us, we're kind of small like us. So it's going to make it a little bit simpler for us. But again, notice how our little uh, chart display here does show the presence of our aircraft as it's kind of approaching the different opponents. And we can actually shut this display off. So if I wanted to, for example, I can make this a full screener to make it a little bit easier to see. Uh, one bummer thing that I was kind of hoping that this button would allow me to zoom this sucker in a little bit. Fortunately, it doesn't, but at the very least, they do give us this capability so we can kind of take a look at it. Or I'll switch to plan mode so you have a really, really good look at what's happening here. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get ready to go ahead and take that turn here. Like I said, our initial heading here is going to be about 240, and that's going to get us on kind of that reverse course, which is going to make it nice and easy for us to do our approach today. All right, set that to 240, keep it nice and easy looks pretty good. You can see I've already pre-marked that. I have external instruments, which make it a little bit easier for some of these things. I'm just going to speed up time a little bit so we can kind of rip through our approach. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Uh, slow down just a tiny bit more. That looks good right there. I'm going to go ahead and activate heading hold mode. We're just going to pretend we're getting vectored here. So what they're going to do, of course, is um, they're going to spin us around and then we have to rotate. And then usually, like I said, we're a little tight for this particular turn, but uh, this won't be giving us too much trouble. Got a 2400 foot warning on ALTS. Uh, we were looking for that particular altitude before. If I go back to the profile page, uh, you can see that we have Janet. That's that 2400 feet that we need for that particular point. We can see now that our FMS is uh, hollering at us saying, hey, what the heck are you doing? You're supposed to be turning ourselves around in a minute. Oh, that's perfectly fine. And one cool thing is you'll notice that because we do have a little bit of a wind today, we can actually see in our approach just how accurate or inaccurate our little operation is. So we're passing a Janet here. What I'm going to do now is switch the CDI. I'm actually going to go back to the PFD. We're going to pop it over to uh, this mode right now. It's going to be my localizer hold. Uh, the reason I want to switch to this mode is this is an ILS approach. So in order for us to be able to safely get down on the ground, we are going to be having to actually use the ILS for that particular purpose. So I'm just going to enjoy my little kind of ride around the corner here. Ah, lovely little area. So much, so wild flying over this region, knowing that I've uh, beat these grounds up quite a bit myself. All right, we just received a call from air traffic control. They've gone ahead and said, uh, go ahead and turn to final. Now, of course, they wouldn't say turn to final. That would be kind of amusing if they did. They don't. So they're just going to give us a quick little heads up to say, you know, turn heading, you know, probably usually roughly north-ish is what they ask you to do. And then they say intercept the localizer, and then you intercept the localizer, and we ride the thing all the way down to the ground. Got to slow down a little bit. We're still moving pretty darn quick here. And again, you can see very, very clearly how you can see both the chart view as well as our regular navigation view at the same time. Very, very good stuff. We'll go ahead and dirty up the airplane when we get a little bit closer. Uh, general approach speed, if there's stuff behind us, we generally want to come in at about 120. That's kind of the sweet spot, but again, that's going to depend a lot. And there is our capturing of that. We're going to go ahead and switch on the approach hold. Aircraft is going to go ahead and take a huge right turn here. Whoa! Or we're going to get banged around by turbulence. Usually a bit of both, actually. <laughs> and now we're established on the localizer. We're a little slow. That's okay, though. Like I said, we want to be doing about a dollar and a quarter, is uh, roughly. Like I said, that 120 is a pretty good approach speed for this plane, for this kind of approach. Now, me, of course, knowing that I just watched the runway go by, I would know that, okay, I really need to fix this approach up because it's pretty messy at the moment. Good time to go ahead and uh, dirty up the airplane, though. Instead, come swinging around. I'll go switch over again. This is just a demonstration of some of the features we have here. Going to profile mode. Unfortunately, uh, we do not get the profile view. Uh, for those of you who are huge fans of the um, uh, four flights, you do get a profile view. But unfortunately, they give it to us, but they don't actually let us see it directly. At any point, of course, we could pop back over here. But for me, I'm just going to leave it in this mode and just sort of walk you through it. That's pretty good. We're going to go ahead and get ourselves ready to deploy everything. We'll take a look down here. We're just going to confirm everything looks good on this thing. Looks good, looks good. We're going to slow down. Inertial separator is going to come on. Landing gear. Landing gear. Landing. Gonna get all sorts of angry warnings. I usually like to drop the gear uh, right when we hit that first dot there. Whoa! Feel that. <laughs> all right, I'm just gonna play the throttle a little bit. Like I said, we're trying to get about 120 knots here. Uh, keep in mind in a TBM, 120 is going to basically be kind of the rush speed. 90 is going to be kind of that last little speed that you're gonna need on the approach. So I got about uh, 118, 119. It's a little slow, but in about half a second here, we're going to grab onto it. Take a look outside the airplane. You can see we're all nice and dirtied up. And I'm just basically monitoring the approach on the way down. Uh, there's the glide slope capture warning. We're going to get bounced about 10 more times. I'm going to pull the throttle back. We're going to start making our way towards that 90 knots now. We're going to get bounced around pretty good here. That's uh, just the nature of the beast, especially this time of year. Catch it before it gets away from you. 
And just like that, now we just have to play the throttle game until we get ourselves all the way down to the ground. Our radar altimeter is alive. It looks like we're at 1,800 feet. Not too bad, not too bad. I give it a couple more powers. And again, you can see by looking over at the charts there that it is monitoring our approach quite nicely there. That's about 90 knots. I'm going to hold it right around that. And perfect. Look at that. Nice and stable approach. So I know everything's good. Uh, I like how it says we're still in Martha's Vineyard Tower there. We should probably fix that. But one of the nice things, again, is um, all that information is now stored right on here. Like, it took me a second to go, oh, look at that. It's that particular frequency. So I could quickly look it up again in the event that I missed it. Like I said, I've talked to Bradley enough times now that I kind of know that frequency off the top of my head. Kind of funny, really, but it just kind of happens. There we go. Bradley Tower. And look at that. It's just, I, I can't describe to you, especially for those of you who uh, fly in VR quite a bit, how nice this is to literally just sit here and be able to have your chart right on your right, check all the numbers right on your right, and be able to go ahead and fly the approach right on your right. All right, we've slowed down to our final approach speed, about 85 knots. Right on glide slope, or right on the localizer. Everything's looking pretty sweet so far. One of the things I really wish is we had the G3000, like in the T, uh, not, we do have one in the TBM. Kind of nice if we had it one of the assessment products. I'm going to go ahead and I'll pop off the item there. One thing we do want to do is kill the odd damper usually. That's pretty standard stuff. I believe it's Giphy. <laughs> All right, 85 knots. We're coming over the threshold now. Looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. I had to deal with the Microsoft patented uh, ground effect here. Just ever so slightly. A little bit of a crosswind. Nothing. Wow, it's like the first day that we don't have a major crosswind. Here we are. Now we're down on the ground. Easy on the brakes. My buddy was uh, telling me a rather interesting story about uh, his buddy blowing a tire on a PC-12 because he was too hard on the brakes. And it's uh, one of those things where I think this flight simulator does not do that well. And now I'm going to show you the best trick of all. So uh, keep in mind, you don't want to be changing charts until you've uh, got yourself to a complete stop. As a matter of fact, let me be well behaved here. <laughs> Let's get ourselves out of the runway into a complete stop before we start pulling handles and touching buttons. One of the nice things about working with a crew, and when I fly in the real world, you know, I've got my you know, beautiful wife to kind of help out with some of these things. She'd be the one pushing all the buttons for me so I wouldn't have to panic too, too much. Hey, stop it with the beeps. All right, so now watch this. So now I can go ahead and hit back. I can come down to info and watch it. Look at this, look at this. <laughs> now I have the actual airport diagram ready to go. Um, that is so spoiling. You have no idea how convenient that is. And uh, one thing you're probably asking is, hey, um, is this a pop-out item? Uh, the answer is yes, it is a pop-out item. So I can actually pull this out on the desktop. Alt, right, uh, left click, by the way, in case you're curious. And now I can actually put this on a separate screen so I can put it over here in my second monitor and I can actually follow where I am on the ground. Isn't that awesome? Again, that's just a neat little trick there. So for those of you who have followed along so far, uh, again, uh, thanks for watching and all that other good stuff. Uh, keep in mind, this is a paid product. Uh, this is not something that uh, we have. Um, the good folks at Navigraph were not helping me out or anything like this. This is just something I knew that some people were asking about. And to be honest, I was kind of curious about myself. I think as of right now, it costs about 10 US a month in order to have access to this particular item. But I would not be surprised if you know there's some kind of adjustment in the future that makes that a little bit more accessible. Or maybe there's some kind of a package deal. I have no idea. But the fact of the matter is, if you're looking for that extra added piece, especially if you're doing some kind of instrument work, a pretty cool product. Enjoy.